Hi. All right. Hello. Hi. 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 <laughs> How are you? How are you? Ça a du mal à marcher. Ça a du mal à marcher. Just see you. Very, very well. It's working. I think there's a little lag in uh, data. Okay. So, so we'll we're just... going to try to speak uh, slowly. And we'll pause after we speak to let the other person go. Okay. Okay. So uh, if you would start by introducing yourself and the chateau and say where you are. Okay. Oh, sorry. I'm exhausting with the. Okay. So, we are. Uh, you are here in Chateau Lancier. So is uh, Regis Valentin, the owner of the estate. Hello. Uh, hello. Hi. I'm Fanny. I'm working with Regis, uh, and I'm gonna be the one that speak with you today. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, talk about Chateau Lancier. Well, let's talk about Pic Saint Loup first and then Languedoc okay. in general. Okay, so um, we chose this spot because uh, we thought that you could see the Pic Saint Louis in the back. Beautiful. So maybe the big location would be we are in Languedoc in south of France, uh -huh. okay, 30 kilometers north of Montpellier. Okay. And we are just uh, at the Pic Saint Louis, which is a little appellation. Pic Saint Louis, let me try to show you, is this mountain uh -huh. and in front the cliff of the Artus. And ah. actually, you can see Lancier just right there. Okay. Okay. You're not so lucky today because it's raining. Ah. But uh, normally, it's very sunny. Nice. Okay. Because we are in Languedoc. So we have more than uh, 320 days of sun by year. Wow. So it's. Well, Longer so, climate. So it's a good bet for a coming to vacation there. Very good spot for vacation. Yes, we're waiting for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so tell and us. We will be able to move, of course. Excellent. So tell us about Chateau Lancier. So Chateau Lancier is actually a, a family estate um, run by Regis Valentin here and his wife, uh, Christelle uh, Valentin. Um, it's a family, um, family estate uh, in the middle of the Pic Saint Loup appellation in a little village called Val um, It's an historical estate here on the appellation. Um, Mr. Uh, the estate was created by uh, Regis' uncle and father. Um, oh, okay. In the 70s, yes, and uh, voila, is uh, Mr. The creation for longer dog appellation. So, what all grapes do you grow there? Grenache. Mourvèdre, Carignan, Sanso, for the red and the rosé. But in uh, Pic Saint Loup, uh, minimum uh, 50% Syrah for the blending. I see. Okay. To call the wine Pic the Saint Loup, Loup okay. it must have 50% Syrah. You, yes, you yes. must. Yes. Okay. And, and here, actually, oh, sorry. I, uh, and here, we decided to make this interview on a um, new, on a young vine of okay. Syrah, voilà, on a little plantier, so uh -huh. we can show you after how we look the vine right now in, uh, in April. And so it's beginning to be rosé season uh, here. Uh, so what is the grape in your, or the blend in your rosé that's delicious, by the way? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the rosé will be 50% uh, of Syrah. 40% of Grenache, and we have a little bit of uh, Sanso, 10% of Sanso. Okay. And can the rosé then be called Pic Saint Loup? Alors, yeah, it, be, it can be called Pic Saint Loup because the vine that we use to do this rosé uh, are coming from a vine which is classified by the INAO, Institut National des Appellations d'Origine, uh -huh. which is classified as a Pic Saint Loup vine. So 
Yes, as soon as the grape come from the vine classified in Pic Saint Loup, we can call our vine, uh, our wine, sorry, Pic Saint Loup. And it must have 50% Syrah minimum. Syrah, okay. So if we were at the yes, Waverly, please. sorry, go ahead, Regis. En fait, ce qu'il faut que tu dises, c'est qu'en fait, euh, sur l'ère Pic Saint Loup, c'est vraiment que les meilleurs terroirs qui sont en AOC Pic Saint Loup. Voilà. Um, Il y a une délimitation qui a été très rigoureuse. Voilà, the ENAO, actually, uh, make a very restrictive area for the Pic Saint Loup appellation. Okay. So the Pic Saint Loup appellation uh, is like on the top of the appellation, besides two other appellations in Languedoc. So it's like, a, we are an appellation uh, by itself. And it's higher altitude than around you? Quite, alors, you have to imagine that uh, on top of the Pic Saint Loup, so over there, mm -hmm. you are at uh, 650 meters high. Okay. But the average for the vineyard is um, 150 meters high, which I don't know what is in feet. That's, it's about three times, so it's fine. We understand meters. Voilà, so even if, I mean, we are uh, not, for people who know a little bit Montpellier, we are not so far from Montpellier, but we, we are on the first relief of the Cévennes. The Cévennes, ah, the mountain range, voilà, are just behind the Pic Saint Loup. Okay. That's why, voilà, voilà, it's important to know that. Yeah, so uh, for people interested in trying your wine, I would be having the Chateau Lancier Rosé on my list at Waverly this summer. But since we're, we're all retail in New York and around the country now, I'll be posting wine shops that have Chateau Lancier available on my story. So we'll post that. Um, Thank you. It's very kind of you. Oh, it's my pleasure. And then tell me about your whites. Uh, yes, big, uh, the white. Um, so we have around 15 hectares in white. Yes. Uh, mostly Roussan, a little bit of Marsan a little bit of Viognier, and we also have some Carignan Blanc, which is uh, very unique to have uh, some Carignan Blanc. Very few wine growers grow Carignan Blanc in Languedoc. Carignan Blanc, that's awesome. Cool. Um, yeah, and also your, your, the, what is uh, kind of fun with the Carignan Blanc is that it's the oldest parcel. Um, in Languedoc, we had a big frost in uh, 1956 okay. that damaged almost 90% uh, of the Languedoc uh, vineyards. Wow. So it's very hard to find a vine planted before 56. Um, and so the Carignan Blanc that we have is one of the first uh, vine planted after this big frost. So Interesting. Okay. Cool. And is Carignan, because sometimes Carignan Rouge, it needs some age before it makes great wine. Is Carignan Blanc the same? C'est deux cépages différents. Hein, euh, en fait, C'est une évolution du carignan no noir qui a fait du carignan rouge, quoi. C'est euh, euh, à l'histoire qui a fait ça. Quoi. Ouais, it's not not so, not, um, not so yeah, not, not so. Okay, obvious. but you still have old vines, so you got it, you have euh, it covered. <laughs> white Grenache and uh, Blood Grenache. Ah, yeah. yeah, Regis is saying that um, you can maybe compare the carignan blanc and the carignan rouge, ah, okay. like the Grenache. You have some white Grenache and some white Grenache, yeah. so they give the same structure mm -hmm. but in a different color. Uh, woods. So, for people that don't know the region, you are in between, I always explain the southern border of France, you have Spain, then you have Roussillon, then you have Languedoc, then you have Provence. So, people are very familiar with Provence Rosé, but I always steer people to Languedoc Rosé, and I won't focus on the Rosé much more but it's a it's it's if people like provence rosé they're going to like languedoc rosé and particularly yours of course they will and you need to be open-minded so you need to i mean you need to try all the wine and and uh, the rosé of exactly. languedoc and especially the rosé of the pic saint loup um of course they are different than uh, the provence but it's like you cannot compare red from languedoc and red from burgundy and red from bordeaux right. that's the rich that's the richness of uh, french uh, vineyards but of course you need to discover the rosé and especially because regis is very well known to make a uh, i don't know if i can say perfect but maybe we can say perfect rosé yeah uh, because yes you like it right so i love you know it yeah it's perfect <laughs> um Regis, you know, to do a rosé, you must be very precise yeah. and very perfectionist. If you miss one step, then you, all your rosé can be 
so so mm -hmm. and because we sell a lot of rosé regis is very well known for it, the quality and um the fact that year after year and vintage after vintage you can by the f smell and by the test well you can easily recognize the rosé of last year so regis give his touch on a on a rosé and so um, and so i don't know what i'm I don't remember the, the thing, but of course you must try the rosé because they are very, very interesting, very fruity, with a nice body, but uh, very elegant. And we're working on the, um, on the tannin. We want very soft mm -hmm. tannin and a nice structure. So rosé are very, very good. So it's... Ah, yes. Very important point. It's that uh, because Regis is so looking for perfection on each wine. I mean, we, we grow some, I mean, uh, we, we have some plots that we know we're gonna use to do rosé. So we treat them differently uh, because okay. we know we're gonna do some rosé. Sure. So um, voila, it's a whole process from the farming to the vinification. But on each step, uh, we try to um, put the same, um, I mean, we. We, we know what we want because he's doing the wine from uh, Chateau Lancier for since 95. Mm -hmm. So he knew and he has a big experience. So he know exactly which pot's going to go on, on the rosé and we treat the wine differently then. Uh, so, and it's, I want to say too, it's a serious wine, but it's very refreshing. Uh, it's a beautiful wine for this time of year, but all year round, it's, it's a wine you can drink all year round too, which I like in a rosé. Um, so there's a few more people have joined on here. So, Fanny, can you back up and very generally explain Languedoc and then sure. Saint-Lou and then Chateau sure. Lancier and how it's different from its neighbors and what makes the region, the Appalachian and the winery unique? Okay, that, that, that's something I can do. So, um, the, um, so we gonna be first on the Languedoc. Okay, so Languedoc is, uh, I mean, is the biggest appellation in terms of production also in France, okay? mm -hmm. the big, biggest production. Yeah. But Languedoc is quite new uh, compared to Burgundy or Bordeaux. Um, like we said here, the first year Syrah was planted in 75, which can be very young for Burgundy or Bordeaux, but for uh, Languedoc, it, it's quite yeah. old. Voilà. So Languedoc, uh, voilà, it's a uh, big, big production. But we took the quality, um, uh, with the, the quality challenge, very close by, maybe like in the eighty or ninety. So it's it's new. It's new. It's not. Um, voilà. I always say it's not like Burgundy or Bordeaux, but we are. We worked a lot. Uh, the volume, c'est quoi? In uh, Languedoc, on produit 13 million d'hectares. Okay, okay, in Languedoc, we produce 30 million of hectoliters. Wow. La partie en, en AOC, c'est 1 million de. Tout AOC confondu. Ouais, tous les AOC confondu, c'est 1 million de. And all the AOC, uh, uh, because mm -hmm. in Languedoc, you have different appellations. You have Pic saint loup you will have uh, Terrasse du Larzac, Saint-Chignan, Faugère, Minerva, Corbière, Fitou. And all those AOC are... Uh, one million point two hectoliters. Okay. And, uh, wow. And Pic Saint Lou. And Pic Saint Lou. It's a produit 40,000 hectares. And for the only the little Pic Saint Lou appellation, we produce uh, 40 million. Um, so it's 40,000 40. uh, hectoliters. Okay, that's some okay. perspective. And one of the one of the reasons I've been doing this is to introduce people to smaller family wineries because especially in the retail market, there's so much marketing muscle for really big, big companies. And I think it's important to, you guys are a small business, just like my restaurant's a small business. And I think it's important <laughs> to, to support the small producers. I mean, we get to talk to Regis when we have a glass of wine, but it's also supporting another small business. Sure, um, sure. Um, then, uh, yes, it's a family business. So run by uh, Regis and his wife, Christelle. Uh, to give you an idea of the size of Chateau de Lancier, if we if we well, if we talk only about Chateau de Lancier, so we we run eighty hectares, okay. eight zero, uh, sixty hectares in uh, Appellation Pic Saint Loup, uh, 
but we also have so 20 hectares in Languedoc, and we Merci. also produce a little bit of IGP, Indication okay. Geographic Protégée. Mm -hmm. okay. um, we produce around um, 350,000 bottles per year. Okay. Which is quite big, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a good activity. And, <laughs> um, <laughs> and we are 10 person to work with wedges all year long. Say that again? We are uh, 10 employees. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Working with wedges all year long. Um, and uh, we, during uh, like now from uh, April to May, and June, we can hire for the vine because we do a lot of things uh, by end in the vine. We can mm -hmm. hire uh, 30 person more. Okay. Uh, so, of course, it's a family affair. Uh, but voila, we think that that's very touching that you like so much the rosé. Uh, because, you know, sometimes we are on our little village, on our vine, and we do the work. And it's very touching to see that uh, we do this for the pleasure of uh, somebody. So <laughs> that's, the, the, uh, that's the passion of the wine, right? Exactly. Exactly. That's, uh, it's, I always, I tell people that when you have a glass of wine, you're taking a little trip to the region. It's a way, it's a, you pause and you step out of where you are right now and you, you take a little visit. Exactly. Yes, exactly. And when we are in the vine, we don't realize that. So it's important also for us to have some feedback. Excellent. My pleasure. Uh, somebody just asked oh. Peak Saint Lou. Does that mean the, the, is it like Peak Poule de Pinay, like the peak your tongue or is it the peak of a mountain? Yeah, I just, well, I just saw the question. Okay. No, uh, Peak Saint Lou, uh, Peak Saint Lou is, uh, so we are in the Languedoc. So Languedoc, you were talking about the Spanish border and then we go to Nîmes on the yeah. north and that's all the Languedoc. In this Languedoc, you have different appellations. Uh, Peak Saint Lou is one of them, 30 kilometers north of Montpellier. Actually, we have the appellation, the more at the north of all the appellation of Languedoc. And Peak Saint Lou is this mountain. Okay. Peak Pool, Peak Pool de Pinay mm -hmm. is another appellation uh, near the Mediterranean. So they are more um, on, the, well, on the seaside, on the Mediterranean, Mediterranean Sea near Set. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, so it's two different appellations, but uh, uh, you can get some confusion. But the yeah, actual remember. word And it's peak. white. And it's a white wine. Peak Pool de right. Pinay, they uh, put white way. But in, in Peak Pool, I think that the word peak means it bites your tongue like it, a bee sting. It's a sharp. And peak, ah. the, word, the word peak, where does that come from? Uh, it's oh, no. the name of the cepage. The no. cepage, the varietal, is called Peak Pool. That's, why you, that's where Peak Pool comes from. And Peak, peak Saint Lou, the peak word comes just, it's the name, or does it mean something? Like no, that? it's the mountain. The peak, like the mountain we have uh, behind us. Okay. So then uh, uh, I'm going to ask you kind of re repeat a little bit. You said you're 30 minutes north of Montpellier, but the Peak, Pool, yes. uh, peak Saint Lou appellation is unique, how, from its neighbors? Okay, so that's uh, something very important. So you have to imagine, so we have 30 kilometers north of Montpellier. And that's from the coast also. Montpellier is on the that's coast. That's from the coast, yes. We are 30 kilometers uh, from, away from the sea. Mm -hmm. We have uh, uh, two different aspects on our climate that we call terroir. Okay. Mm -hmm. The first thing, it's kind of hard to imagine today because of the clouds, but we are on the first uh, range of the Cévennes. So just behind the Peak Saint Lou, you are on the Cévennes, mm -hmm. and it's a mountain, okay, mountain range. And this mountain range um, makes that uh, we have a big temperature in summertime during uh, day, daytime and nighttime. So it's very hot during, uh, during the day. And at night, we have the cool breeze that comes from the Cévennes, and that makes all the little valley you have in Peak Saint Lou. Uh, very fresh. So you uh -huh. have a big temperature during the day and the night, Ça, which is great pour... for the Syrah. Yeah. And for okay. the maturity that, that comes very slowly. And uh, voilà, the maturity voilà, comes very slowly because at night, 
it's cool down and, uh, and, ouais. et voilà. Et il a fait des de, de maturités sur longue longue et douce. Voilà. Hein, comme les tanins. Et... Maturity are very long and progressive and very soft, like the tannin at the end that we have in our wine. Uh -huh. So that's uh, first uh, first aspect. And the second aspect, the sea, which is uh, as you said, 30 kilometers away, uh, the clouds come up from the sea and they will block on this relief that we see behind us oh. and that makes more rain here than in other appellations in Languedoc. It rains more in uh, Pic Saint Loup. That's Which awesome. is also great for the fine. That's it's really it, you explain it so well. Uh, and people say terroir, you think it's just the soil, but it's not. It's the climate and the geography so much. Sure, sure. Very, it's very it's cool. a whole combination, and of course, it's a combination also of the soil. Uh, we are. Uh, do you want to see the soil, the ground? Sure, and some vine buds. Uh, oh, okay. And me, Fanny, uh, you can you can turn the camera around. There's a button with some arrows to flip the camera, so you can point it easier if you want. Oh, sorry. You have to explain me. I'm quite there, new on Instagram. Sorry. Every, everybody is. There's some arrows that make a little circle. If you push that, it flips the camera so you can direct the camera easier if you want. Ah, okay. Like not be on a selfie, right? Exactly. Okay, I got you. Sorry. There you go. Perfect. Voilà. Okay. C'est pour montrer. Mm. That, okay. Let's, voilà. Okay. Sorry. Oui. So um, that's the that's the soil. Attends, on va lui on va lui montrer ce, celle-là. So caillou. So that's uh, clay limestone, as you can see. Mm -hmm. It's raining a lot, so it's kind of muddy. And I wanted to show you um, the the stage of the vine right now. So we are in a twenty second April, and you can see. Let me show you. Il est où? Um, we have the first grade that comes that ah voilà that comes out. Do you see it? Yes, yes. Beautiful. Voilà. So that little little grade uh -huh. that will uh, become uh, the vintage uh, 20 in few months. Awesome. <laughs> That's so nice to see. Voilà. That's another reason I started doing these because a friend of mine said, even though we're in quarantine, the vines don't stop. And it's very optimistic exactly. to get outside and to see the vines and you guys making wine for us for this next year. Yes, we, the vine don't stop. And uh, we work a lot on the vine. And uh, this, the, yeah, it's uh, give us a, a, a good perspective, right? Yes. And also so many people are stuck in their homes and their little apartments in New York City that uh, my friends, I wanted to show them some, some nice scenery. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what's happening in the vineyard right now? Uh, you're done pruning, maybe plowing. And, and how is that different with the quarantine? People coming to work, uh, getting workers for the harvest in the, in the summer. How does, the, how does that work in regular and now in the quarantine? Alors, um, Uh, on, on the vine, the quarantine did not change uh, so much because we, when this old story of the quarantine started, we did not uh, finish the cutting. So we needed to finish the cutting. Now the cutting is over. Okay. Uh, but all the persons working in the vineyards are working uh, uh, full time and no quarantine because the vine grows and uh, for 80 hectares, Uh, it's a lot of work, so yeah. they they continue working. Uh, the next step, là, it's um... là aujourd'hui là c'est un petit peu un, un creux là, comme tu dis. Après dès que ça pousse, on va mettre on va se mettre à palisser. Voilà, we 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 wait for the vines to grow, mm -hmm. just to grow, and we're gonna start a trellising. Trellising. Okay. Okay. We'll be uh, to to take to 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 take all the the. Voilà. All these and put them into the um, the tree. The the wires that train the, the vine. Wires. Yes. 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 Uh, Fanny, you can turn it around yeah, so we're good. talking at you again. Okay. Attends. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Is that Christelle? <laughs> yes. Yeah! <laughs> say hi. Say hi for me. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> nice to see you. Everybody's so good oh, with the umbrellas. You. It's great to see you. 
You're very brave for standing in the rainforest. We really, really appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, while I think of it, Christelle sent me a link to a very beautiful video about the family and the winery. Can people DM you or it's on your website if they go to your uh, your profile here, here on Instagram? Uh, yeah, they can, they can, they can have. I mean, the video will be on a uh, Vimeo only for the moment. We are gonna put it on YouTube, but if they go on our website, they can easily find the uh, the link and watch okay. the video. It's it's, yeah, it's really it's idea. stunning. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Thank no, you. it's it's beautiful. <laughs> it shows and the family. Want... It shows the the yeah. landscape too beautifully. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> and the work, and because now people in quarantine, they have some time to spend. Maybe it's a good idea to spend 20 minutes. Exactly. <laughs> it's, a, it's a nice escape from inside. So, exactly. um, so the trellising, your 10 employees, that's enough employees. You don't need the harvest workers. No. Uh, um, harvest is only September, October, and that's the regular employee. But for trellising, this budding, uh, we hire uh, sometimes 20 people more. Okay. So the 10 employees are not enough. And, oh, so for, for trellising, you will have more, more employees. We'll, we, we will do, yes. I yeah, see. And will they be from outside France? And are they able to cross the border right now? No, there are um, people that we always hire every year. So it's okay. always, always the same person. Okay. Um, because there's, the there's some issues. My friends in Roussillon had some issues with Spanish workers. And, and here in the States, there's some weird border stuff going on with, with workers for harvest of, you know, vegetables and stuff. So, okay. um, well, I don't want to keep you in the rain. And we're almost at a half an hour. So I want to thank you for no, coming no outside. No, it, it, it doesn't win so much. It's not. It it's okay. So, so um, do you want to say anything before we go or I, we still have some time oh, yes but, yeah. you must see the secret of Lancia. do you want to oh. see the chapelle d'alerac yes of course let's go let's go it's the um because we we talk about the rosé but we did not speak about the red yes and please actually, do red and pig saint Lou are very important and um more it's more important <laughs> when the, yes the of rose. course you wanted some rosé but <laughs> we <don't talk> <laughs> no please do and, it's uh, delicious and, and <laughs> let's hear about it yeah uh, so we have a cuvee that we sell in the uh, USA called uh, La Coste d'Alerac. And uh, now you will uh, see. Oh, sorry, I'm going to just put, uh, put the battery on. Oh, okay. So, sorry, technical issue. No, no worries. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Um, the, the name of the wine is uh, Coste d'Alerac, and actually, Alerac is the name of a little chapel. So, I'm gonna do like this. Ah. Eva, if you send me a picture okay. of that, I can post that because <laughs> I'm not even sure of the spelling. Sorry, go to the Chapel yeah. d'Alerac that you can see behind uh, this. I love it. And so the way that we sell uh, is uh, La Costa d'Alirac. And so the vines surrounding the chapel, uh, we used to do the Cuvée Costa d'Alirac. Okay. Look, the little chapel. Here it's, you know, it's it almost feel like paradise. Yeah, it's gorgeous. <laughs> yes. It's a Roman, uh, a Roman chapel. Roman chapel. Wow. See, you guys are living in history over there. Oh, now it's starting to snow oh. again here. <laughs> Wow, oh, you're under the snow. Uh, a little bit, yeah. Il neige un peu. Um, oh, so, pas où je passe, du coup. Donc là, la chapelle. It's I'm going to show you. It's gorgeous. In the middle of the vine. Wow. And, uh, uh, she's, um, I mean, she's, yeah, it's a uh, thousand years old. The land voilà, nearest the 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 trees is a little more special. Is that the case here? Like the vines? Sorry? Sometimes in Bordeaux, you find uh, the, the vineyards around the, sh around the Eglise is a little more special. Is that the case here? 
Um, not so much. Not, not so like much. It's just not, an artifact like of the... Involved, okay. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Uh, well, and you can see the peak in the in, 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 in the back. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, voila. We are on the... I mean, yes, it's very uh, bucolic and a uh, very nice place to be. It's beautiful. <laughs> so the, the wine, explain the, the Americans are really fascinated by cepage. Can you tell us the grapes? For the red? Yeah. Uh, so again, tell us again. Syrah. Syrah. Mm -hmm. uh, that must be 50% Syrah minimum into a saint Louis wine. And then we have uh, Grenache and Mourvedre. And we also have some Carignan, but uh, Ca so Carignan, actually, we have some white, as we speak before, and we also have some red Carignan that we are using on the Colerac. On the wine Costa d'Alerac, you have Syrah, Grenache, and Carignan. Uh, and, and then how is know, it, then, what is the élevage and the blending? Do you ferment and okay. then blend or blend and then ferment? We ferment uh, um, plot by plot. And only okay. after oh, cool. the we do the blending. And okay. then, yes, we uh, age in a, like a regular tank, that's a concrete tank. And mm -hmm. some of, of the wine, we also age in a hog barrel. Okay. Great. Voilà. So this is, the, voilà, you can see the Pic Saint-Loup, Lancir. And Lancir, just... Uh, just here. This is Lancier. Amazing. Ah, yes, the yes. Okay. That, you see? Yeah. Voilà. It's Lancier. Beautiful. That's where we do That's everything. Cool. Awesome. Okay, so when I come to visit, what are we going to eat with the red wine? What, do you, what kind of food is from the region that you serve with the red? Let me see. Uh, let me ask Christelle what she's going to prepare you for dinner. Do <laughs> you prepare for dinner? <laughs> oh, yeah. They love... Um, Duck, uh, duck magret. Ah, fabulous. Duck breast. Fabulous. <laughs> Maybe with a nice uh, potato, but you know, with uh, butter and uh, <laughs> smashed potatoes and, uh, and a nice glass of uh, red wine. It should be something very, very simple, but very good. I can't wait. Excellent. <laughs> that sounds delicious. Well, I would have let you go, but this has been a pleasure to meet you, Fanny. Um, Christelle and Regis, I met in New York, and we had yeah. Apero together, and it was just really special. And yeah. uh, I want to thank Regal for putting us in touch again. Fanny, thank you for your help. This has been really, really cool. Uh, a really nice chance to get out of the house, and, uh, and we look forward to getting your wines. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank, thank you. you, thank you, Jeff. All right, take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.